Hi everyone, I'm Michai here. Today's video is all about aggregates, entities, and value objects. This is our first look into the domain layer. These are the building blocks of any application that's built following domain-driven design. By the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of what aggregates are, what entities are, what value objects are, and how you decide if an entity is a entity or an aggregate. So if that doesn't make sense yet, then don't worry, by the end of this video, then it should make sense. I do have a quick disclaimer before we begin. So even though I'm a Microsoft employee, I'm not talking on behalf of Microsoft. These are my personal opinions. Okay, so throughout the examples today, we're going to use this application as reference. This is basically a dinner hosting platform. So as a host, you can create a new dinner, then you can invite people to come to this dinner and they can attend if they want. And guests can also just scroll the list of dinners and explore what's available and reserve a spot. Okay, so looking at this, then let's imagine how the model of the dinner behind the scenes of this UI, what it actually looks like. So let's imagine we have something like the following, right? So the name and description that we looked at are is available. We also have the start and end date time. Then we also have here some other stuff like the location of where it is. We also have the reservation, which has some details like the guest count, who's the guest that is reserving, and some other stuff. Okay, now that we have an example that we can talk about and imagine, I want us to take a step back and I want to introduce two new domain-driven design terms. The first one is entity and the second one is value object. So basically, in the domain-driven design world, if you look at the domain layer, any domain object is either an entity or a value object. An entity is an object that has an ID and is mutable, and a value object doesn't have an ID and is immutable. Okay, so like we said, every domain object is either an entity or a value object. And what's important to note is that for entities, two entities are considered equal if their IDs are the same. So even if the values are completely different, but the ID is the same, then we consider the two entities to be the same entity. And for value objects, all we care about are the values. So if the values are the same, then they're considered equal. Now, something that's important to note is that when we're talking about domain objects, then we're talking about plain old C Sharp or Java objects where we are capturing both data and behavior. So going back to our example, then this entire thing is the dinner entity. Each one of these reservations is the reservation entity. Then we have here different value objects like the price, right? The location. And we also have all the various IDs. So the dinner ID, the menu and host ID, the reservation and guest ID, and the bill ID. Okay, now that we have a better understanding of these terms, then I want to introduce another very important concept, which is an aggregate. So basically, when you have one or more domain objects that need to stay consistent as a whole, then we call it an aggregate. Okay, so looking at this entire thing, then we have here an aggregate, which is the dinner aggregate. And the dinner aggregate has inside the reservation entity and the various value objects. And it's the aggregate's responsibility to make sure that this object is always valid as a whole. So looking at this example, then when a new reservation is made, then it's making sure that the total guest counts isn't more than the maximum guests or that the status is always one of the valid statuses, right? So you can't move, for example, from in progress to upcoming, right? You can only move to ended and so on, right? So it's basically making sure that this entire thing is consistent and valid as a whole. Okay, now the entity that is the root of the aggregate is called the aggregate root. So in our case, the dinner isn't just an entity, it's the aggregate root in this case. So if we look at it from our new perspective, then we see we have the dinner aggregate where the dinner entity is the aggregate root, which internally has a list of reservations that has internally some value objects and same goes for the dinner. And if we generalize it for domain layers in general, then the domain layer will look as following. So we'll have various aggregates which have internally zero or more entities and value objects. Okay, so the process of modeling a domain is basically taking the different objects that you're going to have. So looking at this, it might be the reservation and the dinner itself and so on, and thinking how you model it where everything is either a value object, an entity, 
or an aggregate. Okay, now this isn't a simple task and there isn't one way to do it, but there are a couple of rules and guidelines that you can follow that will help you when modeling. So I want us to go over them. Okay, the first rule is that if you need to reference another aggregate root from your aggregate, then you do it by referencing the ID. Something that's very common to do is to create a value object that contains the ID and then you simply hold that value object. Instead, we saw it with the dinner. We'll look at that example again in a few minutes. The next one is a fundamental rule of the aggregate. It's that the aggregate is a transactional boundary, which means that changes to the aggregate are committed and rolled back as a whole. So any changes you do to the aggregate, you basically pull the entire aggregate from the database, do whatever changes, and then you write it back to the database. That's why we prefer having smaller aggregates rather than bigger aggregates. We don't want to have to read and write a lot of data every time we want to make a change. Okay, so this is very important and this is something to keep in mind when you're designing your aggregate. Okay, the last one, this is a rule that is more like a soft rule. You need to be pragmatic about it, but basically any change to the aggregate is done via the aggregate root and this is so it can enforce the invariance. This is similar to the rule that you want to have private setters on your objects so no one can manipulate them without you validating that the manipulation is valid. Okay, moving on to actual practical steps of modeling your domain. Then, like we said, we want smaller aggregates. So the first step is taking each one of your entities and defining it as an aggregate. Then, based on your invariance, then you merge the different aggregates into one aggregate. So in our case, that would take the reservation entity and move it inside the dinner entity. Okay, the last step comes from the fact that if you change one aggregate and it needs to change values in another aggregate, this is done via domain events. So the way this works is you make changes on an aggregate, this raises a domain event, and relevant parties subscribe to these events and they make changes internally. This means that the reacting aggregate will only be eventually consistent with the first aggregate. So if you have two aggregates that can't tolerate this latency, then you can merge them also into a single aggregate. So looking at our example, then we have our two entities, the reservation and the dinner. We look at them as two aggregates. Then because we always want the number of guests to be less than the maximum guests that are allowed, then we merge the reservation aggregate into the dinner aggregate and we end up with the following structure. And lastly, some good questions to ask when you're modeling. Okay, the first one is taking two entities. For example, we can take the host and the dinner and ask yourself, does a dinner make sense without a host? Okay, so if the entity doesn't make any sense without the other entity, then it might be a local entity and not an aggregate root. The next one is, will it need to be looked up? So are you going to search for it by ID? If yes, then probably it's an aggregate root. And the last one is, will it be referenced from other aggregates? If yes, then also it's probably an aggregate root. And like we said, take the ID, put it in a value object and store it in the other aggregate. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you have a better understanding and something more practical that you can use when you're modeling your domain. What we're going to do in the next video is we're actually going to look at the entire Booper Dinner domain layer and we're going to model the entire thing following the things that we talked about today okay so that's it i hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new if you enjoyed it then make sure to smash that like button and the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one